بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وقدواتنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأسكى التسليم اللهم علمنا بما ينفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزيدنا علما يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everybody عيدكم مبارك سعيد تقبل الله منا ومنكم إن شاء الله now we're on the second day of Eid and we're back to class so whoever is <laughs> Here with us tonight, then you are the few, the proud. Um, understandably, a lot of people are on vacation and doing other things. So I didn't expect participation to be at full force tonight, but we will do whatever we can. So moving right along, we are in chapter 13. And chapter 13 is all about plurals. Okay, plurals. And we talked, I'm not going to bore you again. I'm not going to bore you again with um, the breakdown, the last two or three lessons, we've talked about the breakdown of the different types of plurals, right? There's the sound plural and the broken plural. Sound plurals apply to human or humanistic uh, nouns, whereas broken plurals apply to objects. That's the general rule, at least. Um, and uh, we looked at how those look, and we also talked about uh, plural demonstrative pronouns, right? The difference between hada and dalika, hadihi and tilka, which are all singular, and haulai, right? Haulai is our new demonstrative pronoun that means these, and alhamdulillah, um, it is the same whether it is masculine or feminism. So, uh, <laughs> Allah, it is the same as a Freudian slip, I guess, whether it's masculine or feminine. Um, not feminism. That's for a different discussion about feminism. Is for a different different class altogether. Um, so, <clears throat> one last thing to worry about: know that when you're in demonstrative pronouns and you're in the plural, you don't have to worry about gender anymore, right? You are you only have to identify haulai. And guess what? The same applies when you do the demonstrative pronoun for what's far away, which is ulaika, which we'll learn later. So ulaika is probably more familiar to you. It's more common of a word in the Quran. Ha ulai and ulaika, near and far, demonstrative pronouns in the plural. They don't have any differences when it comes to gender. Um, so the third thing, and we're going to notice this today, and this is going to start with this very exercise, is that we are going to also have to keep track of the subject pronouns when we're converting things to plural, right? So we know that hua and hia and ena and enta and enti, right? Those are all singular subject pronouns. However, when we are moving from the singular to the plural, we have to account for that too. And so if we want to say they, we have to say hum, right? That's the subject pronoun for they. When we want to say we, we have to say nahnu. And when we want to say uh, you, plural, we will have to say entum. So we're going to be seeing uh, that today as well. So looking at the next exercise, we have حول المفردات المكتوبة باللون الأحمر إلى جموع كما هو موضح في المثال. Um, and just for those who are interested, I like to, because the once you're, this is a huge benchmark, right? Or a huge milestone in your Arabic learning. Whenever you can figure out exactly what the instructions are saying, you know that you've made a lot of progress in Arabic because the instructions are very difficult. We've talked about hawila or hawil, hawala yuhawilu, uh, hawil, which is a verb in form two, which means to convert or to change. Tahwil, right, is the mustar, it means to convert. Mufradad, mufradat, excuse me, is a sound masculine, uh, excuse me, what's with me tonight? My mind is elsewhere. Sound feminine plural, right? From mufrad. Mufrad literally means something that is by itself from farada. Farada means fard is like a, a unit, right? A mufrad in this sense is like a term, maybe something we would say or translate as a term in English. So um, mufradat, sound feminine plural, is the terms or the words. Al-maktubata, maktuba is ism maf'ul, 
from kataba yaktubu maktub following its feminine form maktubata right written literally billawn al ahmari in the red color ila jumu'in making the singular here it's um actually sorry it's not referring to terms is referring to singular so convert this the singular words that are written in the red color that are written in red ila jumu'in two plural words kama huwa muwaddahun fil mithali as is explained or demonstrated in the example let's just take a second to look at muwaddahun this is a perfect illustration of something we talked about before we said <clears throat> that form 2 is if we take a verb and we double the middle letter fa'ala shadda on the ayn whatever the ayn has to be okay and we said that the ism fa'il the doer of that form form 2 is mufa'ilun mufa'il with the middle letter that's doubled having a kasra and the ism maf'ul Right, the past participle or the thing that's receiving the action is a simple haraka away from that mufa'al. Mufa'al. So just this little difference between a kasra and a fatha is the difference between the subject and the object in the second form, in form two verbs. Mufa'ilun, mufa'alun. Mudarrisun, mudarrasun. Now we have the root wow bod ha which means to to be clear okay wadih right if you've ever been to any Arab speaking lands wadih means like clear okay um if we turn it into form two it's wadaha you wadihu it's to clarify right making something uh intransitive transitive if we want to make the doer, it is muwaddihun, the one who clarifies. And if we want to make it into the object of the verb, it is muwaddahun, the one which is clarified. Kama huwa muwaddahun fil mithali, as is clarified in the example. Okay, so just, you know, I like to throw a little morphology at you just to... Uh, Get some mental floss in and keep those kind of tendons limber um, because it's something that will enrich and enhance your study of Arabic as we move along. So all that to say, what's the example? Men had the rajulu huwa hajun. That's our example. Okay. Who is this man? Singular. Huwa hajun. Ah. So we have our verbs here are ar-rajulu and hajun. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert those two nouns into their plural forms, right? Both of these happen to have broken plurals. The, pl pl the plural of ar-rajulu is ar-rijalu over here. And then the plural of hajun is hujajun. Now we also have to change the words that are tied or that refer to it, all the types of pronouns. Because pronouns are, what are pronouns at the end of the day except words that stand in for nouns. So if the noun changes to plural, then the pronoun is also going to have to change to plural. So we have hada is now going to become haulai. And hua, which is a subject pronoun, is going to become hum. So we have the demonstrative pronoun hada becoming haulai, and the subject pronoun hua becoming hum. And that is what this exercise is asking you to do. Let's start. Let's go with. Um, okay. Uh, Brother Muhammad Mu'tasim. So read the example and then work to convert it to all plural nouns, the word in red. The word in red needs to be converted into plural and any word that also has to change because of that change. Okay. Min aina hadal talibu. Good. Huwa min al-hindi. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. 
Men aina haulai 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 talibu hum min al hindi. Very good, excellent. The only quibble here is with what's the plural of a talib? Um, talibun. Oh, it looks like it should be sound masculine plural, but it's not. We discussed tulab. Tulab. Okay. Tulab. It is a broken plural. But everything else is completely correct. Yeah. So min aina ha the talibu, right? To min aina ha ulaid tulabu. Very good. And then he recognized that the huwa had to change to hum. Hum mean al Hindi, and al Hindi won't change because there is no plural India, right? It, it only makes sense because we're only talking about the students. That's the only thing that's going to change. Good. That's the idea. Moving on to number two, Brother Sai. Good. Uh, Fantastic. Yes. Aina Aina Tajaru. What's the plural of Tajir? Tajir. Uh, this is going to show who reviewed the vocab. Because I think last class was the one where we were given the, the broken plurals. If you scroll up, if you have it on your phone or on your your pad or whatever, if you scroll up just a, uh, a couple pages, you'll see the big exercise where we had all the plural forms of these words. I'm not going to check right now. Let's see, where was it? Um, these are adjectives that are becoming that are becoming plural. Oh, they have them. Yeah, they have them right here. So it's the very last exercise. We're on page, what is that? Um, 70? Yeah. On yeah, in my and my on the PDF, it's page 70. All right. So page 70 is gonna give you pretty much all of the plural forms that you'll need. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Uh I think it said tujar, like. Yep, a tujar with a dom. Tujar, no. A tujar. Aina tujar, aina tujarul kabiru. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Good. But, but, but we have to change every word that also depends upon that noun. So before we were talking about pronouns, subject pronouns, the master pronouns. But we also have other types of words that are going to be tied to that noun, such as adjectives, right? Didn't we say that the adjective has to agree with the noun it describes in four things? Number, gender, grammatical case, definiteness, indefiniteness. So if a tajir changes to plural, guess what? Al-kabir also has to, to change to plural. And that was also on the previous exercise. What's the plural form of al-kabir? Kibar. Yes, Al Kibar. Al Kibar. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we go from fantastic, good. Aina Tajirul Kabiru to Aina Tujarul Kibaru. Good. And now change the last, the answer to that question to reflect the plural as well. I'm uh, whom? Uh, fantastic. And that was easier, right? Just the subject pronoun. Humfisuk, they're in the marketplace. Great job. Okay, we're up to Musarrat. You could do number three. Okay. I don't know if it's just me, sister, but I can't hear anything except what sounds like a vacuum cleaner. I can't hear your voice. 
Is it just me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. There we go. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. No um. Okay. Ainal Ainal Mudarrisul Jadidu, who is Ainal Mudiri, and it will be Ainal Mudarrisuna. Yes. Ainal Mudarrisuna Jadidun. Fantastic. Uh, who? In the, uh, it's just, is it just one movie? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, who in the movie? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. Mudiri. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. good. So notice exactly. So System Sarah did very well. Mudarris, who mudarrisun, right? Sound, masculine, plural, an easy one. Um, but also notice something interesting. So Al Jadid is the adjective that describes Al Mudarris. We notice here that it's possible that one of the words is going to be on a the pattern of the sound masculine plural, and the other is going to be a broken plural. And that's not a problem, right? When we go to the school, the sound masculine plural, el jidud, is a broken plural, and that's absolutely okay. It doesn't have to be just because they have to to match in plural plural does not mean they have to match in type of plural, right? It, we don't have to have sound plural and sound plural and broken plural and blo broken plural. No, like we're going to have sometimes it's possible a sound masculine plural and a broken plural or a sound feminine plural and a broken plural, etc., etc. Good. Back to uh, Brother Muhammad Tassim with number four. Aina talibul jadidu talibul jadidu. Yeah. Ahua. Okay. I I know I know to I I know to lab to labun. Good. To labu. Yep. It's labu. Um. Okay. Let me find the plural for jadid. Um. It's right above us. The previous uh the previous question, I should say. Okay. Ainal tulabul judud. 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 Good. Ahum fil fasli. Fantastic. Very, very good. So, at talibu to at tulabu and al jadidu to al jududu. Nice and short staccato right there. Al jududu. <laughs> So, uh, fantastic. Um, next, brother Sa'ar, number five. <clears throat> uh, 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 number five, Ahada. Okay, uh, number five. Uh, 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 where is uh, where is Ha'ulahi? Yeah, this is oh, Hada. Hada. Oh, I, I, I'm translating it directly. Okay. I had it. I had it. Talibu. Good. Uh, Rani, Rani you. Rani you. Rani you. No. Mubtada khabar. Good. La. La. Huwa faqirun. Fantastic. Yes. And so, in plural? Uh. 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 uh uh it's difficult right <laughs> uh, 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 yes sir uh, oh, 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 oh. this is khabar <laughs> khabar has to reflect the number yes no. sir. what's it gonna be scroll up previous exercise we had a Ghani. What's the plural of Ghani? Ghani, Ghani. <clears throat> On the pattern of Afila.
Oh, um, Vrani Yoon is going to be. Uh, Where's an ayah with Aghmiya? Um, Surah Al Hashr, right? Surah Al Hashr has Aghmiya. Bain Al Aghmiya Imiyakum. Yep. Kayla Yakuna Dunatam Bain Al Aghmiya Imiyakum. Aghmiya. Good. Okay. And what's the answer? It has to be in plural. La hum fuqara'u. Very good. Ah, we know fuqara. All right, so the Tawbah and the other ones, good. That hum, fuqara, fantastic. Okay, Sister Musarrat number six. Man hadha rajulu, man hadha rajulu, huwa boyfum, man ha ula'i rijalu, hum boyfum. Fantastic. Yep, nice, straightforward, easy, well done. Uh, number seven, Mohammed Matazin. Lee Akun Kabirun. Yes. Wa Talibun Bil Jamati. Bil, again, look carefully. Bil Jamiati. Yeah, Jama'a, Jamia. Jamia University. Jama'a is uh, stick to the Jama'a. Good. Okay, now I'm plural. Okay. Li li ikwatun. Very good. Tabiru, no, ikwatun. Kibarun. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Um tulabun. Yes. Bil. Now this is going to stay, Jamia is going to stay single. No problem. Yeah. Right. If you had, if you had multiple brothers that were in, were like at the university level, you wouldn't say like they're in the universities, right? They say like they're in university or they're right at college, it, it, idiomatic English. So the same here, right? Bil Jamia, see, is going to stay the same. Good. Okay. And Brother Sarah, number eight. Aina Sodi Aina Sodi Sodi Kot Sodi Hoka. What's on the cough? Is it a fetha, a kasra, or a bomma, and why? Aina Sodi Sodi Hiki Sodi Hika. Um, oh, uh, what do we have all up here? Look, number two, three, four. أين التاجر؟ أين المدرس؟ أين الطلاب؟ Because of the the أين؟ Because with أين it's still it's still مبتدأ خبر, right? So we have uh, let's say let's just pick this one أين التاجر؟ Okay, مبتدأ التاجر. Uh, the khabar is aina. It's just we moved forward the thing that we're asking about. So, at tajiru, let's drop kabir just for a second to make it easier. At tajiru, aina. Right? So, this is mubtada, at tajiru, and whatever means aina mm -hmm. is khabar. Okay? Fil fasli, fi amrika, huna. Whatever it's covered, okay. So down here it's the same thing. Aina sadiquka with a bomma because sadiq sadiq is mubtada. Even if this is mudaf mudaf ilay, right? Remember that the mudaf does not have a fixed grammatical case. The mudaf, the first part of the possessive construction, can be marfur, it can be mansub, it can be mazrur, no problem. It's this right here, the second part, the mudaf ilay, which is majrur. In this case, we can't tell because it's a pronoun. Pronouns are fixed and they don't change. 
but yes, don't get thrown off by the by the word order. It's still Mubtada Khabar, so it's going to be Marfu' with a Dhamma. Aina Sadiquka or key if we want. No. No. ذهب إلى المكتب no ذهب إلى المكتب ذهب إلى المكتبة fantastic good now make it plural أين أين Aina 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 as Sodi as Sodi as Sodi Ko Ukum Estiqau. We don't have to now check it out here. Look, they only made red Sodiq. They did not make the calf red. So we're going to keep calf the way it is. Okay. So it'll be Estiqau. Uh, yeah, no. Aina astuqa, or excuse me, astiqa uka. And here the um, where is it? Yes, the hands is going to be written above the well. Astiqa uka. And then the answer. Zahaba ilal ilal mak zahaba ilal maktabat ilal mak ilal maktaba. Fantastic. Very good. Okay. Pointing something out. Okay. To say dhahaba, now we're talking about estiqa'u, right? Plural. Dhahaba means he went singular, right? So if we're going to really, really be sticklers with the what the exercise is asking you to do, it would not be the haba, but it would be the habu, right? The haba, the habu. And it would end with this. I'm just going to show the ending, right? The habu. However, this is something to be aware of in Arabic syntax. In a jumla fi'liya, when you start a sentence with a fi'l, even if the subject is plural, it is permissible and sometimes considered more eloquent to use the singular form of the verb. Yes. ذهب الطلاب. Yep. ذهب استقاؤك. Yes, that's correct. Even though for the purposes of the exercise here, maybe they would like you to be aware that um, the subject is changing. So ذهب is changing to ذهب technically when it comes to I'm not exactly sure why this is, but it's certainly, um, let's see, can I think of that? Anybody think of an example from the Quran? But sort of, because room is like one of those ism jama'. It's like a singular noun that refers to a group of people. Tabbat yada abi lahabi wa tab. Tabbat is the singular feminine. Did you, did you have an example, Sister Musarab? I, 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 I didn't actually check in the Mus'haf, but I was just thinking uh, instead of Yusuf, they ran to the door. Uh, I'm sorry, Yusuf, which? Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to look it up. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always safest, right? Uh, Right now, the, the more quaint example I brought up was Tabbat Yada, right? Yeah. Yada is dual, and we have Tabbat, which is singular feminine. Um, it's something that's well known in Arabic and is considered more eloquent. It's more eloquent in a jumla fi'liya to start with a singular verb, even if the subject is plural. Uh, so, sorry, you were trying to find an example where the um, verb is singular? The verb is singular. It's a jumla fi'liya. The verb that begins the sentence is singular, but the subject is actually plural. 
Oh, okay, then I, no, I don't. There you go. Surat al-Mu'minun. Qada aflah al-Mu'minun. Aflah is a singular verb, meaning he succeeded. But what's the subject of the of the success? Al-Mu'minun, sound, masculine, plural. So it could have been, you know, if we're to be like extreme literalists, it would be qada aflahu al-Mu'minun. But no, that's not eloquent in Arabic. If you have a jumla fi'liya, sentence begins with a verb, even if the subject is plural, the verb begins, it's more eloquent, let's say, for the verb to um, be in the singular form. Okay, so that was Brother Sire for number eight. So number nine, we're at Sister Mutarra. <clears throat> Okay, um, Muhammadu, Muhammadu lahu bunun, uh, sawirun, huwa talibun fil madrasati, uh, Muhammadun, uh, lahu, um, uh, lahu bna sirarun, hum, ullab, Fantastic. Very good. Okay. So the plural of Ibnun is Abna'u. And the one minor correction that we have to add here is that Ibn, correctly read, very good, is with a Hamzat al Wasl. However, when it moves to the plural, it gets a Hamzat al Qata. So now it goes from Lahubnu or Lahubnun right here to lahu abna'un. Just like when we say, uh, Allah, lahu, al as lahu asma'u, well, that's with Ali Tham, lahu asma'u al-husna, right? But still it's the same point, al asma'u al-husna, right? With ism is the same exact thing as ibn. In the singular form, it has a hamzat al-wasl. In the plural form, it has a hamzat al-qata. What's the difference between a hamzat al-wasl and a hamzat al-qata? Hamzat al-qata, you always have to pronounce it as a hamza, whereas a hamzat al-wasl, you're only going to pronounce the hamza in the beginning of your speech. Uh, yes. And I believe that abna'u is abna'u mamnu' min as-sarf. I want to say it is, but let's double check up here. Muhandisun jurudun ikhutun atibba'u asdiqa'u agniya'u. Where did it go? A'mamu I know we had it. Where was it? No, it's not Mamun Asaf. It's it's, uh, it's example number. Uh, let me just see. I just saw it. Uh, nine. Number nine. I skipped right over it. Yep. Abnaun. Fantastic. Very good. So be careful about that. Look at that. That's very tricky. Abnaun has a tenween. Mm -hmm. huh? And other words that appear to be on a very similar, if not the same, phonetic pattern do not. Like. Fuqara'u, uh, Agniya'u is a better example. Agniya'u, Mamnu'a min asarf. Astiqa'u, excuse me. Mamnu'a min asarf. Attiba'u, Mamnu'a min asarf. Abna'u. Yeah, there's a letter missing there. So it's not the same pattern. That's probably why. Astiqa'u, Abna'u. It has one more letter. Uh, good. So let's put these back in their proper place. Where are we at here? Not too far. Yes, Abna Un. Good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think we have one more, and we'll uh, we'll look at see how long the next exercise is. Back to Brother Muhammad Mu'tasim, number ten. <clears throat> Azami Luka Mujtahedun Mujtahe Mujtahedu Nam Hua Much Hua Mujtahedun Okay A Azum 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 La Zum Zum La Uka Good. Only thing is the meme has a feta. Zumala uka. Zumala uka. Zumala uka. Mujtahidun. Good. Excellent. 
نام هم مجتهدون Fantastic. Good job. Mujtahid, Mujtahidun, sound, masculine, plural. Excellent work. Any questions about this exercise? <clears throat> That was a very beneficial exercise. Okay. We have one more. Uh, we got two small exercises. Let's see. I will probably just have time to do one of them. So... It says, أضف الأسماء الآتية مرة إلى اسم ظاهر وأخرى إلى ضمير كما هو موضح في المثال. You already know that كما هو موضح في المثال, just like last uh, exercise means as is demonstrated in the example. What do they mean here? أضف from مضاف مضاف إلى إضافة is to add or join. الأسماء الآتية أسماء has a fatha because it's the in the accusative case uh, مفعول مفعول and be it's the object of the of the verb you're going to join the following nouns once to the name اسم ظاهر like the proper name that's over here in the middle column وأخرى and then another time you're going to add that same noun to ضمير you're going to add it um in a possessive construction to a pronoun okay so you're going to be making two different possessive constructions mudaf mudaf ilay here's the the ism that you're dealing with abna'un asma'un sumala'u astiqa'u and look that's really nice we we're just talking about those the first time you're going to make it possessed by a proper name that's in the middle column Abna'u Muhammadin. So notice how here Abna'un has tanween. Boom, here it does not because it is mudaf. It lost it. And there's nothing to lose here with Zumala, so it's just going to stay the way it is once you get there. And then the second time we do it, okay, now you just move on further down the line and you're going to be given a possessive pronoun and you're going to make the same ism possessed by that possessive pronoun. Abna'uhu. And one of the things that they're trying to demonstrate to you is how the Hamza changes form depending on where it is in the word. Here, as the last letter in a word, Hamza is written by itself on the line. Whereas when it's not the last letter in the word, it is not written by itself on the line always. Here it has a Dhamma. It's written as a Hamza on top of a Dhamma. Okay, so where did we, I think Muhammad Muqtasim was the last person to go for the previous exercise. That leaves us with Brother Sa'ir for Asma'un. So if Asma'un literally means names, what we're going to be saying here is the students' names. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to say the students' names in Arabic? The, the students' names. Uh, as, uh, asma, as, asma, 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 tulab, asma, tulab, tulabi. Fantastic, exactly. And it might be more helpful for you to think in the English of using the word of the names of the students, right? That way we keep the words in the same order. Asma'u tulabi, names of the students. Good. And then now if we want to say simply their names, what would it be? Asma'uhum. Yes, exactly. And notice, oops, getting ahead of myself here. Notice that when we're going to write it here, now it is asma. Ah, a hands on top of the well. Oh, <clears throat> very good. Next one, uh, Sister Musarrat. Um, uh, family. 
and uh, Humala Uk. Very good. Uh, Humala Uka. Very good. And the same thing, the only difference between this. They made it too easy, actually. They should have made us figure out the pronoun, at least. You know? Yeah. Because really, all we're doing is uh, all we're doing is really putting this um, in, you know, making it indefinite. Yes. Right. Because because yes. uh, it can't be definite in in this. Could it be definite in this format? No. Yeah, it can't be definite in this format. So all we're doing is making it um, indefinite, and then so so really, it's too easy. Correct. It is too easy, but you know what? I'm going to defend the author, Dr. V.F. Abdurrahman here, and say that there's a reason why he made this exercise so short, because it's not one of the principal things that we're learning here. However, something that I've already notified you of, just because I noticed it going on in the previous exercise, he's now forcing you to reckon with. Okay. So what if you had a diff different teacher that wasn't me, and they just didn't talk your ear off and restricted themselves to exactly what's in the book, and they didn't point out that abna'un and asma'un have tanween, whereas zumala'u and asdiqa'u do not. They're on a different phonetic pattern. And so one of them is mamnu'u min as-sarf and the other one isn't. So Dr. V.F. Abdurrahim is exposing you to that. Secondly, he's exposing you to something else that I pointed out that the book didn't tell me to point out. I just pointed out because I noticed it, was that if we have a word that's by itself or in uh, nekira form or whatever, it's going to, the hams is going to be on the line. Whereas when it's not the last letter in the word anymore, it's not going to be on the line. It's going to be written in a different way. So my um, reading between the lines is that the doctor is just trying to get us to think about these, these two things. And a lot of uh, Last one, and then we're out of time. Muhammad Mutsasim. <clears throat> Asdekaul Mudarisi Asdekauhu. Uhu. Very good. And the same thing exactly applies. Hems are written on top of the well. And that's it. Anyone, any questions? Can I ask you an unrelated question? Sure, of course. Okay. So I just wanted I just wondered if you could um grammatically break up when they say um al e uh Eid ul Abha Mubarak. I just wondered if you could grammatically break it up. Oh. Um, the reason I ask is because um someone sent me a message which said Al Mubarak and I just wondered why are they saying Al Yo? Good. So I thought it was um I thought it was like Mufida Habar, you know, like um Okay, well so like either sure. Abha is obviously um, a mudaf mudafile, right? Right, yes. So then the Eid, the Eid cannot have an al here, right? The Eid cannot have a what? Uh, it cannot be definite. Correct. Well, it is definite, but by position, not by other yeah. So yeah. So that was one error in the, <laughs> the message. And then they said al mubarak and I said, no, it can't be al. And so now I'm just wondering what was the grammatical. I, I thought this right. was mudaf, mudafile yet. Is it or good. not? Good, good, good. Okay, so let's get rid of al adha for a second, just because most, like, the the, the, the simplest expression people say is they say Eid Mubarak, right? Right, okay. They don't yeah. say Eid ul Mubarak, right? They say Eid Mubarak, okay? So right. what is Eid Mubarak, right? What's the gr grammar of Eid Mubarak? Okay. It's not a complete sentence, okay? This is a dua that you're making for somebody, right? Oh, yeah. You want somebody to have an Eid Mubarak, a blessed Eid. Okay? I wish you, so it's like saying, you know, so you don't say, I wish you a happy birthday. You say, well, you don't say that anyway, but. <laughs> I understand, yes, yeah, yeah. Happy but, many returns of the day or whatever, yeah. No, no, you're right. So look, so check it out. So it's Eidun Mubarakun, right? Nakira, Nakira, Khabar, Khabar. It's, oh, not, okay. it's not um, complete because with many Arabic phrases, idioms, readings, it's chopped off. Everybody understands through context that you're wishing somebody an Eid Mubarak, mm -hmm. right? So whatever Arabic fills that purpose is clear. Okay. Like, so, uh, and if you add, uh, if you add the al uh, then then it becomes mudaf mudafili. Yes, but it's still part of the. But process. still, still on the floor, right? Yeah. So exactly. there should not be an al on Mubarak anyway. In Correct. It, right? In Correct. As far as right. I understand, that, that would be surprising to me. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, it's... so I think I think uh, you know, I mean, to be really honest, it was one of those WhatsApp sticker messages. Um, except that now I'm, well, I I usually anyway check them because they always have spelling errors in them. Right. But yeah. then when I saw that 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 I'll just it looked a bit jarring to me, and I thought, wait, have I got the grammar wrong? So anyway. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's just like imagine in, a, in an alternate universe if it was Eidul Al Bhal Mubarak, that still isn't mm -hmm. a complete sentence. No, they had an Al in front of Eid as well. It was fully deaf. Oh well, that's just wrong. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't have an Alif Lam from an Eid if it's possessed by an Al. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. that was it. Was, it was really bizarre. That. Okay. That's uh. What <laughs> Kulla Somehow that Al before Mubarak. Uh, you know, it, that was the most jarring for me. Yeah. Um, when I thought, there's something wrong with this. No, it's good. It's good to start, you know, like looking around and and the Arabic phrases that you know, just try to like, oh, what's the grammar of that? Or I wonder what the grammar of that is. That's actually a really useful thing to go through. So thank you for um, bringing that up. That's good. Good stuff. Any other questions? Okay, very good. Excellent work. We'll see you, inshallah ta'ala, Saturday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.